Chapter 11 The second planet was inhabited by a very vain man. Ah, oh, a visit from an admirer, he exclaimed when he caught sight of the little prince, still at some distance. To vain men, other people are admirers. Hello, said the little prince. That's a funny hat you're wearing. It's for answering acclamations, the very vain man replied. Unfortunately, no one ever comes this way. Is that so? said the little prince, who did not understand what the vain man was talking about. Clap your hands, directed the man. The little prince clapped his hands, and the vain man tipped his hat in modest acknowledgement. This is more entertaining than the visit to the king, the little prince said to himself, and he continued clapping. The very vain man continued tipping his hat in acknowledgement. After five minutes of this exercise, the little prince tired of the game's monotony. And what would make the hat fall off, he asked. But the vain man did not hear him. The vain men never hear anything but praise. Do you really admire me a great deal? he asked the little prince. What does that mean, admire? To admire means to acknowledge that I am the handsomest, the best dressed, the richest, and the most intelligent man on the planet. But you're the only man on your planet. Do me this favor. Admire me all the same. I admire you, said the little prince, with a little shrug of his shoulders. But what is there about my admiration that interests you so much? And the little prince went on his way. Grown-ups are certainly very strange, he said to himself, as he continued on his journey. The next planet was inhabited by a drunkard. This visit was a very brief one, but it plunged the little prince into a deep depression. What are you doing there? he asked the drunkard, whom he found sunk in silence before a collection of empty bottles and a collection of full ones. Drinking, replied the drunkard, with a gloomy expression. Why are you drinking? the little prince asked. To forget, replied the drunkard. To forget what? inquired the little prince, who was already feeling sorry for him. To forget that I'm ashamed, confessed the drunkard, hanging his head. What are you ashamed of? inquired the little prince, who wanted to help. Of drinking, concluded the drunkard, withdrawing into silence for good. And the little prince went on his way, puzzled. Grown-ups are certainly very, very strange, he said to himself, as he continued on his journey. Chapter 13 The fourth planet belonged to a businessman. This person was so busy that he didn't even raise his head when the little prince arrived. Hello, said the little prince. Your cigarette's gone out. Three and two make five. Five and seven, twelve. Twelve and three, fifteen. Hello. Fifteen and seven, twenty-two. Twenty-two and six, twenty-eight. No time to light it again. Twenty-six and five, thirty-one. Phew! That amounts to five hundred and one million six hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-one. Five hundred million what? Hmm? You're still there? Five hundred and one million... I don't remember. I have so much work to do. 
I'm a serious man. I can't be bothered with trifles. Two and five, seven. Five hundred and million... What? Replied, repeated the little prince, who had never in his life let go of a question once he had asked it. The businessman raised his head. For the fifty-four years I've inhabited this planet, I've been interrupted only three times. The first time was twenty-two years ago, when I was interrupted by a beetle that had fallen onto my desk from God knows where. It made a terrible noise, and I made four mistakes in my calculations. The second time was eleven years ago, when I was interrupted by a fit of rheumatism. I don't get enough exercise. I haven't time to take strolls. I'm a serious person. The third time is right now. Where was I? Five hundred and one million... Million what? The businessman realized that he had no hope of being left in peace. Oh, of those little things you sometimes see in the sky. Flies? No, those little shiny things. Bees? No, those little golden things that make lazy people daydream. Now, I'm a serious person. I have no time for daydreaming. Ah, you mean the stars? Yes, that's it. Stars. And what do you do with 500 million stars? 501,622,731. I'm a serious person, and I'm accurate. And what do you do with those stars? What do I do with them? Yes. Nothing. I own them. You own the stars? Yes. But I've already seen a king who... Kings don't own. They reign over. It's quite different. And what good does owning the stars do you? It does me the good of being rich. And what good does it do you to be rich? It lets me buy other stars if somebody discovers them. The little prince said to himself, This man argues a little like my drunkard. Nevertheless, he asked more questions. How can someone own the stars? To whom did th do they belong? retorted the businessman grumpily. I don't know. To nobody. Then they belong to me, because I thought of it first. And that's all it takes? Of course. When you find a diamond that belongs to nobody in particular, then it's yours. When you find an island that belongs to nobody in particular, it's yours. When you're the first person to have an idea, you patent it, and it's yours. Now I own the stars, since no one before me ever thought of owning them. And that's true enough, the little prince said. And what do you do with them? I manage them. I count them, and then count them again, the businessman said. It's difficult work, but I'm a serious person. The little prince was still not satisfied. If I own a scarf, I can tie it around my neck and take it away. If I own a flower, I can pick it and take it away. But you can't pick the stars. No, but I can put them in the bank. What does that mean? That means that I write the number of my stars on a slip of paper and then I lock that slip of paper in a drawer. And that's all? That's enough. That's amusing, thought the little prince, and even poetic, but not very serious. The little prince had very different ideas about serious things from those of the grown-ups. I own a flower myself, he continued, which I water every day. I own three volcanoes, which I rake out every week. I even rake out the extinct one. You never know. So it's of some use to my volcanoes, and it's useful to my flower that I own them. But you're not useful to the stars. The businessman opened his mouth, but found nothing to say in reply, and the little prince went on his way. Grown-ups are certainly quite extraordinary, was all he said to himself as he continued on his journey.